Hi, I'm Dr. J, and this is a video about Bernoulli random variables. This is the third video in a five-part video series all about discrete random variables. There will be a link down in the description below to all the other parts of the video series, as well as a link to the slides uh, in PDF format. As I mentioned, this is a particular video about Bernoulli random variables, and you watch, if you watched part two, then you will have actually seen this before, but it was given a different name. It was called a biased coin. So that's really what we're going to be talking about right here. All right, so Bernoulli random variables are uh, any kind of experiment where you only have two possible outcomes. Usually we refer to those two outcomes as success and failure, but really it doesn't matter. You can call them whatever you want, but the key is that there has to be two outcomes of the experiment. Now, of course, any experiment you want to run could be dichotomized. That is means you could change it to have only two possible outcomes. For instance, suppose you had an experiment that had a continuous vari variable as the outcome. Well, you just say, is it greater than some number or less than some number? That's a way to dichotomize it, that is, to have only two possible outcomes. So any experiment we have could be put in this framework of a Bernoulli random variable. All right, so uh, with our coin flipping, this is sort of the canonical example of, oh, it's kind of bright there. This is the canonical example of a Bernoulli random variable experiment. We're going to typically represent the success as getting a heads and the failure as getting a zero. Sorry, the tails as a failure, which is zero. Okay, so this random variable is very simple. Probably the simplest random variable there is because it only can take on two possible values, zero and one. Okay, the probability mass function basically just tells you what's the probability of getting zero and then what's the probability of getting one. And the way that we typically parameterize this is that there's a parameter p, and that tells you how the probability of getting a success or of getting a 1 for this Bernoulli random variable. Since there's only two possibilities, then there has to be a 1 minus p probability of getting a 0 for this Bernoulli random variable. So if we have a coin, for instance, and it's a fair coin, what that means is that the probability of getting heads is 0.5, and the probability of getting a tails is also 0.5. All right, so this is the probability mass function. It's very simple. There's only two values in the uh, range of the Bernoulli random variable, 0 and 1, and there's two probabilities. Well, there's really only one unique probability because you can determine the second one from the first. So we have p, the probability of getting a 1, and 1 minus p, probability of getting a 0. Um, all right, so this is time to introduce some notation for random variables. So I mentioned in the previous slide that we will use uh, capital Roman letters at the end of the alphabet typically to represent random variables, so X, Y, Z. Uh, X, then capital X says it's a random variable when it's followed by this tilde. So that tilde says that X is a random variable, and then on the right side it tells you what distribution it follows. In this case, it's a Bernoulli random variable with a probability of success P. Right, so that just tells you the probability of x is 1 is p. And that's the notation, this random variable tilde is common notation for all of our random variables. Then the, the quantity on the right hand side, this Bernoulli p or ber p, that's the quantity that's going to change depending on what random variable we're talking about. For this slide, in this video, it's all Bernoulli p. Okay, so back to our coin example. Here we have a heads and a tails. Uh, we're going to denote heads as the success, that's the 1, and tails as a 0. That's one example. Uh, we have a, a die here, and when we have the die, we could define a Bernoulli random variable in many different ways. Uh, we could say, hey, if you roll the 1, that's going to be a success. Uh, we could say, if you roll a 1 or a 2, that's the success, right? Something like that. Um, this, okay, so we have uh, this example you've seen before of a communications network where you're sending a, a, a message to the communication network and you record whether it was successfully received on the other end or not, right? If it's a success, then the Bernoulli random variable is 1, otherwise it's not. Um, uh, we could think about having an assembly line that's producing some kind of good. And we could have, uh, is that good defective or is it, is that good defective or is it good? Uh, is that product good or is it defective? Um, we could have surveys where in the survey we just ask a binary question like, are you in favor of increase in property tax to pay for uh, a new high school? That's an example. 
Okay, so these are all for newly experiments, and as I mentioned before, you could take any experiment and dichotomize it and turn it into a Bernoulli experiment. All right, so the CDF, uh, cumulative distribution function for a Bernoulli random variable is really pretty boring. Basically, it's gonna be negative, it's gonna be zero all the way up until zero. At zero, it's gonna jump up one minus P, and then it's gonna be flat until you get to one, and then it's gonna jump up to one. Okay, so really a pretty boring cumulative distribution function. Uh, the expected value, you should be able, I should have not shown you that, you should pause right now and you should use the probability mass function to calculate the expected value. So I'll pause, uh, but here it is. So if we just do the math, we find out that the expected value is P, but of course we already knew that because we already did that bias coin in the previous video. The, uh, oh, I should stop. I should show the variance, right? If you didn't derive it previously, uh, then you should do it now. So derive that variance. Uh, it turns out that it's P times one minus P. And on the previous video, we talked about this being maximized at a value of P equal to 0.5. All right, so that's pretty much the properties for a Bernoulli random variable. Uh, let's talk about um, a situation that's gonna come up uh, for our next random variable, this binomial random variable. So we talked in the previous slides about having independent random variables or independent discrete random variables in particular. I'm gonna to add to that now and talk about independent and identically distributed, in this case Bernoulli experiments, but we're gonna extend it to any random variable in a second. All right, so what we mean, um, oh, let's give me some examples. Let's say that we take this coin and we toss it a whole bunch of times, right? And every time we toss it, we record whether or not it landed heads. Uh, we can think about that experiment as being independent and identically distributed. Uh, if we uh, have that communication network that I've been talking about, so we send a message, and we wait some amount of time, we send another message, wait some amount of time, send another message, we can think about that as being an independent and identically distributed experiment, by right? each of those trials. Uh, if we have a deck of cards, so here's the deck of cards, and now we shuffle that deck of cards up, right, and we draw the top card off. And when we drop that top card off, we say, is it a king or not? Okay, this one was not, so that's a zero. If we do it again, shuffle those cards up, we draw the card again, uh, still not a king, right? It's another failure. We draw, shuffle it up, draw a new card. What did I get that time? Oh, so close, it was a jack. All right, so that's uh, an experiment that could also be thought of as independent and identically distributed. Um, so what does this really mean? What this means mathematically is that if we let xi represent the success, in the i-th Bernoulli experiment, right? So if we're drawing those cards for the i-th card that we draw, that's the i-th Bernoulli experiment, and let xi be success or failure, right? So in this case, it was, did we get a king? That would be the success. Then in order for the random variables, xi, to be independent, what that means is that if you have their joint probability mass function, that's the quantity on the left, right? So that quantity on the left just says, What's the probability that x1 is equal to little x1, and x2 is equal to little x2, and so forth and so on until xn is equal to little xn, right? That's the question about having all of those happen at the same time. That's the joint probability mass function. If that's equal to the product of the marginal probability mass functions for each of the individual random variables, Right, so the right side has a product symbol, it has the marginal probability mass function for each of the individual random variables. So if that joint probability mass function is equal to the product of the marginal probability mass functions, then we say that those random variables are independent. And now it turns out that this statement right here is true beyond Bernoulli experiments. So for any experiment, for any discrete random variable, if the joint probability mass function is equal to the product of the marginal probability mass functions, then those random variables are independent. Now, normally, as a scientist or a statistician, we work the other way around. We say, we assume that these are independent, and because we assume that they're independent, then we get to write the joint probability mass function as the product of the marginal probability mass functions. Okay, so that's what independence means. Now let's get to identically distributed. Identically distributed means that the distribution is the same 
for every single one of those random variables. Since we're specifically talking about for newly random variables, we're talking about specifically the probability of getting a success, right? If that probability of getting a success is the same as this for every single trial, then the random variables are called identically distributed. That is, they have the same distribution. In this case, we're going to let P be that common probability of success for every single experiment. All right, so this phrase independent and identically distributed, there's two different concepts. There's independence and then there's identically distributed. Okay. Um, so this identically distributed, right, is specific to Bernoulli random variables, but we can extend it to any random variable by just saying, look, if every single experiment has exactly the same distribution, or the random variable for that experiment has the same distribution, then they are identically distributed. All right, so uh, we will use notation uh, that you'll see in a slide in a second. Uh, if you see IID, that means ident independent and identically distributed. If you see IND, that means independent, okay? All right, so here's an example with a nice Bernoulli experiment. So same setup. Uh, here we have XI tilde, and now this is where you will see the IID or the IND is right above that tilde. So this is saying that you have a set or a sequence of Bernoulli random variables x1 up to xn. They are independent and identically distributed. They all have a Bernoulli random variable with probability of success p. Okay. An alternative way of writing exactly the same statement is to just write ind. So this line here says that xi are independent Bernoulli random variables with the probability p. But since they are all Bernoulli random variables with the same probability, they are also identically distributed. So you can tell from context that this set or sequence of Bernoulli random variables are independent and identically distributed, even though I've only written I and D. Okay. Right? You can tell that they're independent and identically distributed, right? Independent because I and D is there, but identically distributed because it always says ber P on the right hand side, right? So it's the same thing for all the random variables. In contrast, if I were to write this, if I were to write on the right hand side, ber p subscript i, this indicates that the ith experiment possibly has a different probability of success than the other experiments, right? And when there's an i, that same subscript on the right hand side, this means that at least possibly they are not identically distributed. So the tendency that I have in my notes and the way that I write is that I almost always use IND instead of using IID, right? And it's clear from context on the right-hand side whether or not they're identically distributed, okay? All right, so I think that's it. Right, so that's the end of this slide on Bernoulli random variables. The next slide set will be on binomial random variables. Hope to catch you there.